pennies on. Um, I, think, <laughs> I think there is a suggested amendment to this too. Yes. Has somebody given it yeah. to... Uh, oh, I can do that. Yeah. But um, in the absence of Phil, uh, who chairs the Infrastructure, Transport and Environment Committee, um, I'm the Deputy Chair, so I'm happy to introduce this if you like. Okay, well, so um, what I'll get, if it's okay with you, Pauline, yep. is start with staff and then you can introduce it. But in the meantime, you might like to give your draft amendment to Megan or Joe. Okay. <coughs> Okay. Um, yeah, the report you've got in front of you basically discusses issues around the, um, the potential cross-section that we, we may be using uh, on Cranford Street if we ever build the Northern Arterial Extension of Cranford Street upgrade. And I think, um, having spoken to Pauline briefly about this uh, yesterday, um, that, that it's critical to understand the fact that this, making this decision does not commit us to build the Northern Arterial Extension of Cranford Street upgrade. Um, that will be debated as part of the annual plan process and put to the, the LTP. Uh, what it actually does, it just provides a degree of certainty for the people who are potentially bidding on the project. Um, you, you may remember um, the council resolution back in um, July of last year. Uh, council staff were asked to continue with the design and the procurement process. And we've reached quite a critical point in that process now where um, we, we're having to, we, we're in, in negotiations with NZTA and two potential to, uh, to put bids in on building the project if it ever gets built. And as a result of that, we have to indicate to them what the preferred design solution is if it ever gets built. Now, um, what So it's still if it ever gets built. I mean, it's yes. still subject to the annual plan process. That's right. That's, that's very important it's to, to work out. It's not committing us to, to, to anything in the LTP process. It's, it's got a very strong caveat on it. And as part of this procurement process, which we're doing in, in tandem with NZTA, we can pull out of that process in June of this year very important to be aware of that. Okay, so can I first take questions and then we'll come to debate? Okay, Ali and then Paul. And Thanks, else. Vicky. Um, Adam, hi. I just wanted to ask, um, on page 51, 4.3.2, um, there is mention about safety and the thing that seems to um, suggest that higher safety uh, requirements or something that makes the cycleway safer doesn't really need to be applied to those who are confident cyclists. So I'm getting that through the report. So, for example, it says there that um, uh, risk-averse cyclists will not use Cranford Street and in instead use this physically separated. Yes, yeah. But isn't the issue, it's not the cyclist that's the issue or might be part of it, it's actually the uh, distance from the vehicle the speed of the vehicles, you note that the cyclists using Cranford will be travelling at pace, at speed, because they are the more confident. Yeah. You know, and you talk about hitting pedestrians when you're travelling at speed on a bike could be yes. uh, dangerous and cause injury. If they're on the footpath. If they're right. on the footpath. Yeah, yeah. And my question is, I'm confused as to how you're um, uh, arguing, if you like, for safety and saying that it's safer if you're a confident cyclist, because it doesn't matter how confident you are, if a car takes you out, the car's going to win. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that the, there has to be a recognition of the fact that when, when we designed this, the, these, these cross sections, we were, we were forced to, because of the, the, the process, the designation process, trying to fit everything in with the existing road corridor. And it's a case of how you alloc allocate the space within that. So we, we looked at a few situations there as to, to basically, to, to try and work out the best way of accommodating cyclists, pedestrians and motorists who would use the route. Um, what we tried to do was recognise the fact that, because of the fact we're building the Papua New Parallel nearby, um, that will be a very attractive route for, for, the, for the, the, these more nervous cyclists, if you want to call them that. And, and only the more confident ones would, would, would remain on Cranford Street, the, the, the lycra louts, if you want to call them that, which I never would. Um, so effectively, it's, it's reckon, basically, we, we would be concerned about the fact that if we were, didn't provide any cycle facilities at all, that those people would be in peril still, because they would be sharing a lane with, with, with traffic, as I think... But I guess my question yes. is, Adam, is why is the differentiation around whether it's separated or not mm -hmm. seems to be pinned on the confidence and ability of the cyclist when I'm suggesting to you and interested in your response, yeah. that that's actually not entirely correct because it's the vehicle, that how close you are to a vehicle, the speed at which the cyclist is travelling and the vehicle is travelling, surely is a far more important consideration. Well, well that, that's it. correct, yeah. I think that the, my response to that would be that by providing a delineated cycle lane, 
with, which is which is separated, albeit just by a white line. That gives a message to motorists to stay away from the cyclists to a greater degree. That's the reason why we, we do them in other parts of the city, and, and and it's giving that message to the motorist as well, basically saying, st you know, stay away from cyclists in this area. This is a, this is a dead. So this is the best yes. of what one might argue is a yes. Is a Bad sort of well, I wouldn't situation. say it was a bad solution. I mean, to, you know, we had to make compromises in this, and it, and it goes back as far as the designation process, where we had to understand that if we wanted to designate a wider corridor through there, we'd have to make a, you know, a, a very good argument as to why we needed to take people's bands or, or front living rooms off of them, and we, we, we simply wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, it wouldn't yeah. be your argument for Well, well it, it would have been, but then the point is, anybody who was objected to that, and any traffic engineer who was acting for a resident... Salt will be able to point to other other roads around the city, and I point particularly at Curlitz Road, which NZTA have built, where they have fit those roading requirements in the 20.1 metre wide roading corridor, and that's actually the problem. So, if we'd gone seeking that designation in the NOR process, we would have lost it. Okay. I think one of the other issues is that it has been designed to off-road standards. Um, so, basically, there is a um, a standard that's been yes. adopted here, it's not actually just something that's come out of the design office. Yeah, and, and in both cases, in terms of the, the traffic lane widths and the cycle lane widths, widths, we meet the minimum requirements. In the case of the traffic lane widths, we're marginally above that absolute as well. Absolute minimum, though, isn't it? Well, well no, the, the, the traffic lane's marginally wider than the, the absolute minimum. The cycle lane. The cycle lane's absolute. at the absolute minimum, that's right, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you can see um, Pauline's suggested amendment here as well. You don't have any difficulty with that? I, I do, well, can the, the, I'm just trying to work, what is the expectations around consultation with affected communities and community boards? Um, if you're saying as part of the annual plan process, I have no problem. If you are, we've already been out to the community boards, we've already been out to the community on this, um, and they actually had the cross-section out there in no, those documents is, uh, and they came back. Yes, and as long as that's part yeah. of the annual plan and you're not expecting us to do another no. round of consultation, no. but that no. you could interpret that two ways. So okay. I would say okay. approval of the project through the annual plan process. As part of that, we are talking okay. to affected communities and we are talking to community boards. So maybe take the, that last have, one. Have you been to the Hagley Ferrymead Community Board? This is the original proposal went through the Hag Hagley Community Board when it went out in 2014, I think. My understanding, because it's got all the, I was just looking it up on the board, it's got all the cross sections in it, it's got all the intersections in it. Um, we went out as part of a combined combination between ourselves and NZTA. Okay, I've got, further, I've got questions from Paul next, then uh, Jimmy, then Glenn. Mine, mine is around uh, cycle safety as well. Now, the, uh, you're saying the standards are the minimum is 1.2, but we, we had an issue uh, in. Uh, main road in Redcliffe's where uh, the cycleway was going to take out all, all the parking and um, the community were pretty upset about it and they were told they could not go down to 1.2 so I think we were stuck with 1.7 so right. that, that yeah, I mean, the, the, there, are, there are differing standards. I mean, our, our, the, the major cycle route standards we have, the, the cycle, they, they, they want them at 1.7. The, the Osroads minimum is down at, is down at 1.2. Um, just in terms of the, the parking, the, the, there is, um, the, this section of Cranford Street will have no parking on it. Uh, effectively, the parking lane has been given over to traffic. When we went through the very prolonged consultation period around the notice of requirement, um, uh, we got a number of submissions. I, I can't think of very many that mention the loss of parking. There's other issues that raised, but the parking wasn't a, a big issue for those guys. Just, just, just around yeah. the stairs. Uh, yeah. Just I mean, it, it, it is. We, we're recognising the fact that it is. It is the absolute minimum, but it's recognising the fact that there will be the confident cyclists who will use it, and also the fact there will be limited in numbers because of the fact that we're expecting most cyclists will decant across so to the parallel. So generally, you would not recommend 1.2. What's that? Sorry. So generally, you would not recommend. Well, I mean, it, it, it adheres to the minimum standards, is what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I mean, we, I, I, there, there are locations around the city elsewhere where we provide them at 1.2. Example of that on the approach to a Clyde Road, you can see it an example, and that's very similar to what we're proposing here in this case. One of the proposals of the major cycleways is that we are preferring people to go on the Papua Nui Parallel yes, rather yeah. than this, and this one is because we, we don't that. think we'll get all those people over there because of those lycra clad, you know, people. Um, <laughs> decide to like you, Dave. Do down. <laughs> it's just bike gear. People get sorry. Just sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. More distracted than others. Please. Thank you, uh, Jimmy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just one question: what, What's the rationale? You particularly mentioned 
if this the project, you know, course section A, the budget has been put into the annual plan, whether it's the capital program, am I right? Uh, it will be if if it goes back into the annual plan, it will be formed part of the capital program. Yeah, but. Um, in, the, in terms of the way in which it will be delivered, ultimately, there's a recognition of the fact that it's, you know, it's effectively very, very strongly linked to NZTA's Northern Arterial Motorway, which has been built to the north of QE2. Yes. So in terms of delivery, the intention is to deliver it all as a single project, and that's the reason we're going through this procurement process now alongside NZTA. Yeah, but but I'm, I'm still concerned why there is not to be reviewed the overall package in the Annual plan to rebuild. Um, Why the separate? Do, 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 if this we, one separate, no, no, how about no. the other capital Jimmy, program also? Jimmy, separate? The, the budget and the concept goes through the annual plan. This is yes. the design work that these guys are doing. So, yeah. yeah. So basically, the, the, when you approve the long term plan, you took this project out and it's going back in in the draft <laughs> annual plan. So, in the draft <laughs> annual plan, depending on submissions, this won't go ahead if you don't get if if you don't approve the, it going through into the annual plan yes. however we believe the best procurement is it's a 250 million dollar project of which 30 million is ours and we could actually get some benefits of it being delivered together yes. and we're just saying they need some certainty around how to price that okay, however yes. we cannot and we won't be pressing the button on it until we get the funding um, through the annual plan process and that will be consulted with the affected communities and whatever However, we just need the detail so that they can actually firmly firm up a price okay. prior to that time. And, okay. and the problem really is with that, that if, if we can't give the potential proponents that level of detail, they will register that as a risk in the way they price this thing. And as a result of that, they will up the price of, of, of the project. And so it will cost us more money ultimately if we, we can't provide them with this, this, this certainty now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Glenn, I've got next. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this report. Although uh, cycling and cycleways dominate this report, um, I'm actually not clear. Is this about cycleways or the four laning of Cranford Street? Because well, when I look at the schematics, that's what stands out. It's actually the four laning of Cranford Street, and there are cycleways, and that's what you know the modal, sh modal shift we're encouraging. Well, about. well, this. I mean, what what this effectively is? It's a discussion about the potential cross sections that will that will be built there if we proceed with the four laning of Cranford Street. And, and that's, the, that's the thing, it's that if we proceed. So that, that's a debate that will be had through the annual plan process. Uh, so when you start talking about those cross sections, the issue really is how you fit all the constituent parts within the existing road reserve, the 20.1 metre wide road reserve. So, and effectively, what we, the, the critical issue is how you manage cyclists within that corridor. And there's three choices that you've got, which are shown in the cross sections. One is that you provide um, an on-road cycle lane. Another is that you don't provide anything, just provide a, a very wide traffic lane for traffic and cyclists to share. The other one is the fact you provide a much wider shared cycle footpath on either side. Now, uh, we, the, our, our, our um, designers debated that process, went through a multi-criteria analysis and came to the conclusion that the safest one was to do the on-road cycle lanes. And that was reflective, basically, of the, the, the kind of cyclists who would use the route. So, yes, it is about the four-laning, but it assumes the four-laning is in place and it's a discussion about the cycle provision within that four-laning context. So it is about the four-laning, because that's a major issue within itself. <laughs> This has gone out for consultation on that four-laning and it got heard by an independent uh, panel of hearing and they came back saying, yes, with all those objections in that community, yes, that will go ahead of the four-laning and this is the detail. However, they said any one of these three cross-sections meets the criteria rather than saying we think this is the best one and that's why the decision's coming. So that report's already gone. You haven't agreed to fund it yet, so it's not actually happening. But if it did happen, that's been subject to a whole range of, uh, of, of all, already consultation and hearings, which has come back through an independent panel and also come back through you. So, but they left this, I'm not sure, floating, but they said... We are happy with either of those. Correct, yeah, However, yeah. we now need to give some certainty to the contract, just what they would price in. And what we are recommending, if it goes ahead, we believe the safest and the best is actually keep, the, keep them off the footpath and actually give them a separate lane, even though it's a small lane, just, a smallish lane. Just a wee bit more background on that. I mean, the three cross sections you see there, they came out of the notice of requirement hearing. They, when we went into the hearing process, we had an entirely different cross-section, and some people who submitted on that expressed concerns about that. 
And as a result of that, we went through a long process where we looked at these potential designs. So what the, the three designs you're seeing there are as a direct result of consultation that we've already done as part of the notice of requirement process. So people have had a really you know, decent input to this thing in that, in that regard. Okay, thank you. Uh, if that's the questions, is it? Is it a question? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, um, thank you. I um, just have two questions. One is um, uh, my understanding is that this doesn't meet the standards, the NZTA manual of traffic signs and marking minimum standards, which is basically you can have 1.2 for on street cycle lanes where vehicle speeds are low at 40k and below and where it's not possible to achieve a wider cycle lane. So it doesn't say or. So the advice that I've previously had is that 1.2 um, is only permissible in those circumstances according to that. So does this design meet the NZTA manual of traffic My, my understanding, th those, I, 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 I can't, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to, but my understanding is it meets the off-road standards, which are the ones that we designed to. Uh, and that was tested through the hearing and, and confirmed through the hearing. So... So, but there is a New Zealand, in, there is an NZTA manual of signs and markings? Uh, there is, but there's also Austro standards which apply as well, which we use. Right. Okay. Um, and then the City Council's current cycle design guidelines mm -hmm. promote a desirable width of 1.8 to 2 metres? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going against our own well, we, guidelines. Well, in this situation, we're not able to meet those because of the fact that we can't fit that in with the existing designation. If you were, if we had to provide cycle lanes in this section at, at 1.8 metres, you would need an additional 1.2 metres of width on that cross section. You wouldn't be able to provide sufficient width, uh, width there of traffic lanes and footpaths within the existing road reserve, and therefore you can't fit that in. I think the guidelines also are for our major cycleways, as, yes. as has already been explained, and this is not part of that major. We are still encouraging people to go on the um, Papua Nui parallel, so um, that's where we would like people to go. So this is does meet traffic standards, it meets the standards that we've adopted as council, um, and look, I'm sorry, I don't know what the NZ <coughs> guidelines are, or um, Transit New Zealand guidelines are, or what you're referring to there, but it does actually meet safety standards that have been adopted for Australasia, it's, it's and we've like, adopted them yeah, here. Like, so, I, I mean, my biggest concern is that we're creating an unsafe cycleway, um, and I know from experience, and Paul and I know in our ward, we've repeatedly been told that we can't have smaller cycleways, um, and we've made decisions on that, on that basis. We're now four-laning a section of road, putting a cycleway which has got 1.2, which is you know, the bare minimum with, um, so, and we've also got an increase in heavy vehicles yeah, yeah, in the city, a question. in the works. So I'm just trying to understand um, how this passes any sort of safety audit in terms of well, driver behaviour, rather than, to, I know the modelling will say one thing, and we, we hear this all the time, but in terms of human behaviour and the reality of the heavy vehicles that we're using, that's the speed of the traffic, how can we be reassured that this is actually safe? The, the, each of those three cross sections, uh, which you see in front of you there, were taken back to the safety auditor who did the safety audit on the initial scheme for the notice of requirement. And she recommended of those three cross sections that the one we're taking to you now, and this, this is the reason why we're here, that, that is the one that we take forward from a safety perspective. That is the most appropriate to use. Now, you know, I, I think we have to be upfront and say because of this issue of the existing, having to fit within the existing road reserve, there's a degree of compromise in there, absolutely, but that's because of the fact we can't secure a designation to go any wider. But, uh, but as I said, the, the critical point there is we, we were very specific in ensuring that our designers went back to the safety auditor uh, to review each of those cross sections and make a recommendation to about which one they would prefer. And that information was fed through to the commissioners when they actually set those four cross sections, those three cross sections um, that were set there. Okay. okay can I just very quickly, yep, sure. sorry, because I know I've had a good go. Um, page 60, it just looks at the three options. There's a median strip, obviously, yeah. down, but, and I see in the report that talks about people who can Yes, yeah. provides a bit of a safety. However, it's quite... It's two metres, if I'm looking at that correctly. Well, there's not... different widths provided on yes, different so on cross sections. Yes, so cross section C, yeah. it's two metres. Yes, yeah. Now, we're looking at a, a shared cycle footpath, because this was the one that I preferred, and I see in the report, too, that that was the other one that came up as mm. one that was preferred. Yes. So the shared cycle path, is there any way that you've looked at, or could you look at reducing the median 
so that we can actually have a shared cycle path with the cyclists off the road and separated, but um, have with more room because of the, that reduced the, the, the critical issue that came up in the safety discussions when we were going through the NOTSA requirement process was the width of the median. Now, our original proposal uh, had a very narrow 0.6 metre wide median with effectively would have been a fence in between to stop people crossing. There was real concerns that people would still try and cross. So therefore, the, the, uh, there was a lot of discussions at the NOTSA requirement hearing about the need for a median to be provided at a wider width, and that specified that we provide a median at a minimum of 1.8 metres. So why have we gone for two metres on one we got, well, I mean, to a degree, that's what was just discussed as part of the hearings. And it's, 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 it's well, there is about, some I mean, theoretically, yeah. we could, you know, you, you, you could quite easily take 10 centimetres off it's of that and put it onto the shared yeah. path. But that still wouldn't give you a great level of service there. And it would still put you, it would still cause the safety issues, which are, in fact, you would have cyclists moving at a pretty high speed along a shared cycle footpath with pedestrians and doing that very close to driveways with people reversing out. Now, if you know driveways, when you reverse out, you can see very, very little uh, often in terms of what you can see up and down the street. So therefore, there's a risk that a cyclist will pull down there at, say, 35k an hour straight into the back of a reversing car and be thrown off into That's the road. That's my next question. So have you done any modelling around the number of pedestrians? Uh, we, we've not done any... We haven't got a pedestrian model uh, in council. We've got a cycle model which shows that the, the, the use of this will be pretty limited for cyclists because so many are, are, are kind of uh, use the Papua New Power, but we don't have a pedestrian model. Uh, okay, so okay. The other thing that I would just like, you know, thinking about the cyclists that are going to use this, they actually will drive down the road. They won't actually go onto the footpath, even if we made a shared footpath. And so we are then going to even further compromise because I think you've got to think about the kind of people that are going to use it. I'm sorry, I wouldn't go down a shared footpath on my road bike. I might do it on my mountain bike, but on my road bike, I'll go down the road, even if there's not a cycle path, because I'll be going up and down paths like this. The people that are using this are the people that we are saying are not the commuter, not the people that are going into the um, Papua Nui Parallel. So I think we would build a facility that probably wouldn't be used, and in actual fact, it would not be appropriate for the kind of people that were going to use that facility. Okay. okay. Paul, <laughs> last question probably. It is, it's, it's drawing comparisons again back to Main Road and, and, uh, and Reckless, and you've heard us talk about it, and, and there is flexibility in reducing the median. We, we took out the median, that's how we got our car parking back, so yeah. uh, I look at that and it's at 1.8 metres. I, I just see that you could reduce that to 1.4 metres and add a 0.4 of a metre onto the, onto the cycle. Well, range. it's it's a condition of consent. The 1.8 metres was very explicit as a condition of consent. It was, ins it was insisted upon we by the experts. We had the same issue in Redcliffe's, and we got it removed. But this is four lane. It. The Redcliffe's right, is okay, two. Guys. And, and, totally and um, yeah, I mean, effectively, you know, it's the condition of consent. And, and the 1.8, I think, was predicated on the fact that that's the, the minimum width sufficient to allow somebody with a cram to pause in the middle of road off of, off of the curb. So if, if you chopped it down much more than that, you could have a safety concern in that regard as well. And that was subject from community consultation. That's where that okay. came from. Thank you. So what I'm going to do now is start, if there's any debate, um, I'll just put, Pauline, your amendment is seconded by Ali. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So can I put that first? Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? So that becomes part of the motion. Is there any debate? Yanni. Um. Yeah, I, I, I can't support this. Um, I'm really still concerned about the safety aspects of it. Um, and it would be interesting to get the crash statistics for cyclists around some of these narrow cycleways just to actually see what's been happening in the city. But when I think of um, some painted cycleways that I know, like on Pages Road and Breezes Road, where the traffic goes around the corner, and, you know, it just it inherently to me feels unsafe when you think about the fact that we're going to have We've just made a submission asking for wider trucks on our roads. This is a road that is going to be taking trucks. It's probably going to be taking buses, which will also be wider in the future. So 1.2 is so narrow, and I don't think provides sufficient space at all. Um, and it just really, really worries me that, you know, it's... I, and, and Paul and I go through this a lot because we've had a lot of capital works in some of the areas where we've had all the engineering advice, all the safety reports saying things are safe, and you go and talk to the local community, and we just had it with Cannon Hill Road coming into 
ferry, ferry made bridge, 50 people at that meeting all felt unsafe using that intersection. So sometimes actually, and we have a favourite saying around here, that um, the wisdom of the community sometimes exceeds, the collective wisdom of the local community sometimes can exceed the technical <coughs> wisdom of the experts. And like, you know, the, the thing is that the people that are using these things and the human behaviour element often is missed out of some of the modelling and go through some of the central city projects. Try and turn into Hagley Park on St Asif Street with two heavy vehicles on, on your side and you can just see that although it might meet the minimum standards, actually it doesn't feel very safe and that's my biggest concern with this cross section. Um, I am concerned about the other issues too, that you know, the, the wider context we heard people say, actually, it's part of the Papanui Parallel Consultation, that they wanted separated cycleways through this area, through this route, rather than what we were doing. And if you think about spending, I don't know what we're spending on that cycleway in particular, but say 10 million versus 100 million to increase the flow of traffic, and effectively that's what this is doing, four-laning a, a road through a community, I think will have adverse impacts on both our desire for mode change and also for the community in terms of building community. So I, I won't support this today. Um, I, I just think there's too many questions about the safety and actually it goes against what we're trying to achieve as a city. Thanks, Yanni. Ali. Um, I am going to support uh, the staff recommendation, but with some pretty major reservations. Um, I still feel that we're trying to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, uh, and I think that if we put a the same sort of amount of effort, energy, time and money into looking at rail um, than as we are into the cycleways, we would actually be able to take a lot of vehicles off the road um, and make it safer for, for people and take freight off the road. And whenever I raise rail, people say to me, well, you know, we've got to look at a city-wide strategy. Well, here we are putting in a major cycleway uh, network without looking at something like rail, which is an infrastructure we already have in place. Um, I'm concerned about the speeds down this road. I'm concerned about uh, the lack of modelling around some of the traffic movements and pedestrian movements. However, I see what the uh, experts, of which I'm not one, uh, say on this, and I will be voting for it, but with some reservations. Thank you. Pauline. Yes, thank you. Um, and I will say that the Environment Committee also spent a long, long time on this, and we had workshops prior to that and workshops with the um, Shirley Papua Community Board who were generally supportive as well. Um, the thing is that the, the Northern Arterial, the NZTA, is going to, to uh, work on that project and they, they've commenced it. In fact, the Capitone stream realignment is nearly getting towards the end of completion, I believe. So work has started there. It's up to us to prepare for the mitigation for the effects through the community. And as part of our resolution in July, um, we agreed um, that the, we acknowledged the concerns expressed by the residents in St Albans, Edgeware and Innes Road areas. And um, the staff will continue to work closely with the Infrastructure Transport Environment Committee, the Shirley Papua Nui Community Board, and the community on planning and implementation of the traffic management works. Um, to, to advance minimal disruption to current and future communities. This is to be progressed by developing a range of options to address community concerns and with consulting with the community. And these options do include Northern Rail options, potential use of um, Madras Street, Barbados Street, Hills Road, um, to, to relieve some traffic volumes on Cranford. Um, but these can't continue, the business cases can't continue. It has begun, I believe, but we need more funding through the annual plan for that. So um, hopefully um, what we're doing here is actually um, continuing with the design. If we were to halt the design phase, um, we would perhaps potentially incur higher costs to pick that up again later. So I'm supportive of this. Uh, this is the safest option out of three. And as you know, we have got the Papua Nui parallel going in there, and that will, that will provide a really safe cycling option for other people wanting to travel north on their bikes. So um, we did spend a lot of time on this. It's not easy. Um, cramming four lanes into that street. We know that. There are concerns, but I can see no other option than to progress with this design. OK, thank you. I'll, I'll put it... Just ask if you could put one and two separate. You want one and two separate? Uh, OK, I'll do that. Yep. 
Yeah, okay, just quickly, I, I will support it. Um, it's an interesting report because it's also about the four laning of Cranford Street. Um, anyway, that, that's um, just looking at the cycle lane. Uh, you imagine 1200, that's an eight before sheet of jib. So, <laughs> you know, that, that's a reasonable width to go down. Uh, as a cyclist myself, I'm pleased that it's there, although there are some, you know, Cranford Street's pretty problematic. Uh, I'm happy that's there, but but I'm really happy about us number two because I think we've got to get as much buy-in as we can over this if we're going to make a success of it. So uh, happy to support. Okay, Andrew. I think we need to take this decision in context. I mean, this is um, the, the design that will be used, assuming this passes today, if the four-laning project goes ahead and as Pauline's amendment addresses, that's a matter for the annual plan. We're not de facto making that decision today in as much as we're making the design decision today. But looking at what's been put in front of us and what's been discussed around the design, on page 60, we've got the graphic of the three options. Of those three, um, figure one is clearly, in my view, the, the most sensible solution. It's the only one that gives us the designated cycle lane. Um, combining cycle and traffic isn't something that we, I imagine, would support. Um, and we've also heard from um, a cyclist today around the, the shared cycle and footpath and the disadvantages of both cyclists of a certain type and pedestrians regarding that. So when I look at page 60, it's a no-brainer that we would go for the, um, the, the cross-section in figure one, um, the, the staff recommendation. The other option, of course, which has been discussed is option two, which is to do nothing. And I note in paragraph 7.5.1, um, the continued provision of a two-laned road with limited pedestrian crossing facilities and no dedicated cycle lane. So if the debate is about cycle lanes, well, the, the do-nothing approach um, has no dedicated cycle lane. I mean, we appreciate that there are limitations here because the, the carriageway has got a certain size. And the three figures on page 60 really discuss that graphically. Um, we're making the best that we can of the space available, and I've, I've heard the concerns around safety, but really this is making the best of what we've got to give as much safety as we can to cyclists and pedestrians and coming up with a, a set of traffic flows that work in the context of another project that may be approved through the annual plan. Um, in terms of the, the design, um, I support this today for, for those reasons. Thank you, guys. Um, did, Ali, did you second this? I... No, I seconded the second bit. Okay, right. Yeah. Is there a seconder for the substantive motion now? Andrew, you? Maybe okay. Sure. I seconded Andrew. Okay, so I'll put them in two parts. Part at um, item one, it's there before you. Those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. It's carried. And the second part, those in favour, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Carried. Thank you. Um, guys, there is a cup of tea out there. Um, item 10 we've done. Item 11 is the CEO's report, which I don't expect to do on two... Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we might. How about come back here at 11.15 for the CEO's report, item 11. Okay?